Uh, I'm going to go ahead and alt here in the situation and we're gonna go in pretty hard but I want you to notice the kind of positioning that we had. We were behind a rock, we were in a safe position for the most part. We're gonna be able to kill him as well. I'm gonna go ahead and beads her attack so I can alt her through it. And then we've just got him left who should die no issue as well. Very nicely done team. Like I mentioned, hello hope you're doing well and today we're playing some medusa uh as always before i get into this video uh what's the word discord in the description twitch in the description uh, that's all i'm trying to cut down on the time that i use for the intros so uh yeah down in the description if you want to follow or join the discord and we're playing some medusa uh we're gonna go briefly over the videos uh, sorry the abilities now this is also something that i want to cut down on how much time i spent uh, he's actually ganking and he does quite a lot of damage. I'm gonna try to catch up here so we can try to kill the Neja as well. I'm gonna dash to make sure he can't get under tower. And he'll pick up both kills. Very nicely done. It's Fenrir. Good gank. Uh, Lancelot's here, but I mean, he's walking into three people. I don't know what he expects to be able to do here, but okay. <laughs> we'll pick up that kill pretty easily. Um, Alright, I think that went pretty well. What do you guys think? Um, abilities for Medusa. We're going to be going over build uh, as well. And I think some tips and tricks, and we'll call it a video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, starting off with her first ability, you get four augmented auto attacks. During these four auto attacks, it's uh, not timed. It's just four charges of auto attacks. For these four, you will attack faster. You will do bonus damage and tick damage. Uh, I'm actually not too sure on the bonus damage. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but it does do tick damage after and to be honest it does a lot of damage this is really good for burning objectives or just straight up one shotting someone uh, with late game if you manage to hit all four it's quite a lot of damage uh, the second ability is going to be her two which is your main source of clear and usually what people level first however do keep in mind i've seen a lot of people level the one first just because of how much damage that ability is able to do um can i kill him we get the dash, we get the two here in a second. Unfortunately, the Neja did a very good job of body blocking for him and ended up saving him in the process. Uh, like I mentioned, I've seen some people level the one. I level the two because I need the clear. Um, and what does it do? It does damage. It's a line in front of you uh, and it does damage. The cool thing is it stops on the first target hit and then does a cone behind them. Uh, so if I were to throw it at these minions, it would actually do a pretty large cone behind them and end up hitting the Oleron and the Nesha as well. Now one thing to mention is even leveling this first, your clear is not great, so you're going to have to play around this. Um, but the cool thing about the ability, apart from the fact that it's really easy to poke the enemy while clearing the wave, is that it provides anti-heal. This is the important part of the ability. Uh, it provides anti-heal. Medusa has not always had the best clear. She does not have the most auto attack, like her auto attack is pretty slow, apart from again using her one. Her escape is not really that good, um, and she lacks CC when people are good at countering the ult and looking away. All of these are reasons not to play Medusa. If you're going to look for a reason, unfortunately I'm not going to be able to kill her because I'm very low. <laughs> if you're going to- damn I am low. If you're going to look for reasons to play uh, Medusa, there are two reasons. One, high damage. Two, um, anti-heal. The ability for a carry to apply anti-heal without specifically building into anti-heal is very, very strong. I'm using minions to body block for me here, so there's very literally no chance of me actually dying. And we managed to kill him, but not only that, we also got his beads in the process. Very nice. Uh, as I was mentioning... You can, the ability of a hunter to apply anti-heal onto specifically multiple people on the enemy team because this second ability is AoE is very, very important cannot be understated. Um, so if you're looking for a reason to play this character, one, it's high damage from abilities, uh, high AoE damage with the two and the three, sorry, the two and the ultimate. And then it's also most popularly the, the main reason why is anti-heal. Uh, and also she's a lot of fun, but that's besides the point. I don't think we went over her passive. Her passive is Sidewinder. Um, you can basically walk in all directions without suffering a movement penalty. You can walk in left or right directions and strafe with no movement penalty. 
if you walk backwards, you have a movement penalty, but it's not as bad as any other character doing it, basically. Um, and again, I don't like to go over specific numbers because numbers change. So if you wonder why when I go over abilities, I don't tell you how much the abilities do or what their cooldown is or, uh, you know, things of this nature. There are two reasons. One, uh, it would waste a big part of the video for no reason. Uh, two, and most importantly, these numbers change. Uh, characters get buffed, characters get nerfed. If you're watching this one, two months down the line and this character changes, then the video would have been giving you wrong information. Uh, and that's something that I want to try to avoid if at all possible. Uh, we're going to go ahead and skip uh, over the um, three and talk about the ult because I am just used it. Uh, the ultimate is a cone in front of you. And once it goes off, one of two things will happen. Either they're looking at you and they will get stunned and do a lot of damage. And you can see the amount of damage that that does. It's a lot once you level it up. Uh, this combined with the two, three, and one, considering all four of your abilities, uh, scale off of power and do pretty high damage and also having two AoE is reasoning for some people to build her in a more ability power based build such as me. Uh, well, this is an option. I usually like to go for the crit, uh, you know, regular ADC build. Anyways, one of two things will happen with the ultimate. Either they're lurking at you when it goes off, in which case they will get stunned and take the full uh, damage, or they will be looking away when this goes off. They will turn around and what would happen? I don't know what happened there. I'm trolling. What will happen in that instance is you will actually do, actually, sorry, do less damage and uh, and it's not less by a lot. I mean, it's 25% less, which is pretty, it's a lot of damage, but it still does a lot of damage regularly. Uh, so one, two, you will do less damage and you will slow instead of stun. Still good. Uh, but obviously not as good as a stun and specifically if you're going against people on keyboard it's very very hard to actually hit this ability uh, now we'll go back and talk about the three the three is a dash um the, it stops on enemy hits it does damage to like minions and such and it goes through minions and jungle camps and all of these uh things however it stops on enemy hits uh, and kind of does some damage the bad part about this is that unfortunately um you can get body blocked out of dashing away and that's what usually you'll be using this for dashing away and if you can be body blocked out of it then that's obviously not a good thing uh, but it also does serve as some cc if you want to keep someone in place you can dash and root them in place if you hit them with it and like i mentioned it does do a lot of damage all right so those are the the very basics of the abilities uh, for the upcoming videos i'm going to try to reduce this section as much as possible because even here it was like nine minutes long so i do apologize for that I just want to make sure that you guys get the information. Uh, we did go ahead and alt him here, and we did get his beads, so it's not a complete loss. Um, but yeah, like I mentioned, I want to try to waste a bit less of the time on the abilities. I do want to continue to, you know, go over that. Uh, the reasoning being... Nice gank, uh, Fenrir. Reasoning being that um, I know a lot of you that watch my videos are newer, so you might not play the carry role, you might not play Medusa, you don't know what she does. And I want you to get that information here. Uh, that way you can start thinking about what your build is going to be and just kind of already have a mental note of how you're going to play this character if you do indeed decide to try her out. Uh, but anyways, let's start talking about the build here. Uh, first off, I went Leather Kel. To be honest, all options are... I don't want to get too close to the point where I get myself killed. All options for starter items for hunters are okay in the current meta, I think. You can go for Gilded Arrow if you're building crit. You can go for Hunter's Cowl is also very good. Or you can even go for Death Soul. I truly do believe that all of these options are great right now. And it's just up to personal preference or a specific situation. Uh, like obviously if they have built an anti-heal, you might not want to go Death Soul. If you're going crit, then you might favor... I'm going to have to beads and run away here, but I should be fine. If you're planning to go into crit, then you might want to consider Gilded Arrow. That way you can build two crit items instead of three, considering that Gilded Arrow gives you crit once you upgrade it in the late game, and then also some attack speed. So you kind of want to look at the way your build is going. I would recommend Gilded Arrow for crit. I would recommend Leather's Cow for a more like kin size executioner, uh, you know, um, what's the other dominance type of build as we're able to pick him up again. Um, if you're going for that style of build, that's I would recommend Death Soul or uh, Leather Cow. And that's just the kind of way I see it. Uh, now, in this specific game, I went Leather Cowl because I wanted a bit of the sustain up against the enemy... Um, what's his name? Oleron. 
because whenever I go up against a magical ADC, I know that they're going to rush items such as, you know, uh, Telekine's ring. Uh, they're going to rush items such as Bane Cross for the upgrade. And these items give them a lot of sustain. Even with my anti-heal, I don't want to app, like have no sustain in lane. Specifically with Oleron, he can poke from afar. He's very effective these, at these kinds of things. And I wanted to make sure I had some way to counter these things. So we're able to pick him up again. And even now, you can see just how much damage Medusa is able to do. Apart from, and you know, even considering the fact that I'm not even building into power, I'm building, you know, crit at the moment. Uh, and then I also took a look at something, like I mentioned, uh, they don't have a traditional tank. They have three assassins, sure, two of them are going to be building semi-tanky, uh, but at the same time, they don't have those base tank stats that you get from a guardian or a warrior. I thought crit would be very, very uh, effective in this type of situation. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and end up going into crit. If you're going to go crit, uh, or I guess let's talk about the first item first, blood forge. Blood forge is just generally the very best, uh, option at the moment for lifesteal and attack speed. Uh, before it didn't give you attack speed. Now that it does, it is pretty much the best option for these types of situations. Uh, because before if you were buying blood forge, which is a great item specifically for the passive and then also for the, you know, just high damage or high power. Uh, you would say, well, I'm going to be buying this item and I'm going to be sacrificing attack speed uh, as a result. And as a hunter, you want attack speed, whether you're building crit or whether you're building like kin size or executioner. Uh, and these are for one reason. If you're building crit, you want a higher chance to crit, which means you want more attack speed because the more attacks you land, the more times you have the ability to crit. If you go kin size executioner type build or dominance or like, you know, just size specifically executioner you want to have higher attack speed because it becomes a bit more important than buying power because the more attacks you throw out the more of that constant damage procs from the passives uh you know happen and in terms of execute executioner the faster you're able to get that full penetration uh, so these are the things that we had to worry about in the past uh buying a item such as blood forge where we're saying we're getting some power we're getting the amazing passive uh, but we're not getting the attack speed, which is our most important stat. Well, they gave the item attack speed, so now none of those are true. Now you get to have that power, you get to have that amazing passive, you get to have the lifesteal early, and now you also get the attack speed. So you're not saying I'm actually sacrificing um, attack speed to get this. Now I'm not sacrificing anything, right? Very, very self-explanatory why someone would pick this item up. Uh, up next, Demon Blade. Put simply, Demon Blade is probably the best crit item apart from Deathbringer, but Deathbringer is way too expensive for you to be buying first item, and it doesn't offer enough early game to be able to actually rush this item. Demon Blade becomes a lot better. I don't know why the Kokokin was here with me. I was trying to go for the flank. We did not both need to be at the flank, specifically considering she is Kokokin. Kokokin would have helped a lot during that team fight, whether it be through the alt or just through the damage or zone ability, but <laughs> I digress. Uh, like I was mentioning, Demon Blade should be, uh, if you're building crit, Demon Blade should be one of the items, right? Uh, and with Gilded Arrow, you can just do Dina Demon Blade and Deathbringer, which is what I went through here. Uh, now, I'm going to be able to actually kill this Oleron pretty easily, and then look into killing someone else here. Unfortunately, as of now, I don't do the most damage to these tankier characters, and we're going to have to dash away. But we should be fine. Um, as I was mentioning, uh, so yeah, Demon Blade into Executioner, not Executioner, sorry, Deathbringer. Uh, Deathbringer, there's a couple reasons. It increases the damage that we do from our critical strike chance by a pretty decent amount. Uh, nice kill on him. Uh, but specifically, you're able to glyph it. Being able to upgrade the item past tier 3 is very important because you kind of... You grab this item and make the most out of that slot. If you were to buy any other crit item apart from Deathbringer, not being able to glyph it, it's almost as if you're leaving this ability to do something more in the table. You have to look at this item as basically buying an additional passive. Uh, and specifically, in most cases, you're going to want to go for Poisonous Deathbringer, which slows the enemy whenever they are crit, uh, which means one of two things. A they are slowed cc'd making it easier for your team to hit them and b making it easier for you to hit follow-up ability or sorry um auto attacks and keeping up with them which is very very important but that's not even the most important part that's kind of like a okay moment i guess it's fine 
The important part is the anti-heal. I did mention that this character does have anti-heal, so it's not as necessary on Medusa. However, on every other character that doesn't have anti-heal as a carry, this item is pretty much a must-buy uh, in most compositions. However, on Medusa, it's not completely necessary. However, if we take a look at their team, all of them heal in one way or another, right? All of them have a way to heal, and I want to be able to counter that a bit further. Uh, apart from being able to anti-heal them for 40% with my second ability, now I can actually uh, anti-heal them further with the critical strike chance item Deathbringer upgraded to poison Deathbringer. And now all of a sudden, if I hit someone with a two and hit you know a critical strike chance, they're basically not healing much, if at all, um, depending on what the enemy team builds, a contagion or something of the like. Basically, this allows the hunter, which is not usually your job to do it, but if you can do it without sacrificing anything, then obviously it's wonderful. And this is that case where you're going to build crit anyways, and now you also offer anti-heal as a result. Very, very important. Very, very powerful. Um, so that are the reasoning for these two items. After that, you're put into a position where you're actually not able to deal too much with the tanks, uh, specifically if they build an item such as... Um, What's the word? Spectral armor. Your crits don't hit as hard on tankier characters. And if they were to dive you, like if their solo laner were to go on you repeatedly, it's kind of very unlikely that you're going to be able to do anything about it. You either A, run away, which means you're not helping your team fight, or you either B, choose to fight and die because solo laners offer way too much pressure in the late game if you're just building crit. So what do you do in these situations? Well, you're going to have to build into one or two items that are going to help you deal with some of the tankier characters. It doesn't mean your goal is going to, if you're going for a crit build, your goal is not going to be killing the tanks. Uh, but if the tanks decide to go on you, you definitely have the ability to actually kill them. Uh, and that's where these two next items come in that I decided to go for. First one is Kin Size. Uh, kin Size gives us some attack speed. Uh, some power, but specifically the passive gives us bonus damage on our auto attacks based on how much health the enemy has. So the more health they have, the higher this bonus, um, you know, damage is going to be. The cool thing is, the more attack speed you have, the faster and more procs of this item you can get, the more bonus damage you're going to do, the more health they have, the more damage these attacks will do. Right? So you can see, once a character is actually building an excess amount of health, this damage could add up. It might be like 50 damage per auto attack, a 50 bonus damage, but if you're hitting so many auto attacks so fast with your full attack speed, this is going to add up to be quite a lot of damage. Pair this item with our next item, which is usually going to be dominance. Um, you also get penetration, which means your auto attacks are hitting four more on these characters anyways. And you got yourself a kind of combo, uh, a kind of build where you can say, my main focus is one-shotting the squishier characters. I'm going to be able to do that. Uh, but also, I can also deal with the tankier characters if I must, right? Um, and it depends on what build. Again, the builds are endless. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and alt here in this situation. And we're going to go in pretty hard, but I want you to notice the kind of positioning that we had. We were behind a rock. We were in a safe position for the most part. We're going to be able to kill him as well. I'm going to go ahead and bead her attack so I can alt her through it. And then we've just got him left who should die no issue as well. Very nicely done, team. Like I mentioned, take a look at the positioning. I was standing behind a rock. I had I was just ready to pounce at all times. I was standing in a position where I was away from the enemy team, putting myself in a position to take very little damage. Again, considering I was A, behind cover, uh, and B, I had multiple escape options. But I was also standing close enough to the fight where I was able to actually just pounce if anything happened, and that's what ended up happening, and we managed to get the kill here. Uh, with Fire Giant and my bomb from Pyromancer earlier, we should be able to get rid of this new Phoenix, no problem. Uh, but yeah, as I was talking, we went over the entire build, uh, but there are other build options. Are you having trouble against the tanks? Like, halfway into the game, that solo laner is fed. Your, um, you know, enemy guardian is basically unkillable. What do you do in that regard? Well, you might not want to go crit in that case. You might just want to go for a full attack speed penetration type style of build. You're going to want items such as kin size earlier on, and you're still probably going to pick up the blood forge. Uh, you're going to want to go something like kin size, blood forge, dominance, executioner, silver branch bow. You're going to want to go for a more attack speed penetration power type of build, and that's completely fine. It's up to your 
kind of circumstance this is what i like to kind of hammer into you guys if you will the idea that there is no perfect build the perfect build is a build that changes every game depending on circumstances right uh in this case they don't have any real true tanks they have assassins building tanky which is a bit different they don't have a dedicated guardian a dedicated warrior which means even with them building super heavily into uh tank stats they're never going to be as tanky as a guardian or warrior because they're lacking these base stats that warriors and guardians receive right so i felt that it would be very fitting that i go for the um you know crit style of build but i still left myself open to options of actually buying two items to help me deal with the tankier characters usually i'd recommend dominance instead of executioner like you saw me go here uh but the truth of the matter is this game is about to end i don't expect this game to go on much longer we're going to win this next fight and we're going to end the game and so i'm not going to have time to back and get my dominance so i'd rather just get executioner and have it now for this next fight than not you know get any items and then just end the game um like I was mentioning, the very best build is a build which changes every game. You have to look at the enemy team. What am I going to have to deal with? Do they have a warrior solo guardian jungle or sorry, guardian uh, support and then a warrior jungle, right? Or do they have characters such as Zong Kui who are very tanky? Like these are the things that you have to look at. If they are a very tank heavy comp, then you should not build crit. You should just go attack speed penetration, right? Tank shredder build. Are they, do they have no tanks, like in this situation? Then crit might be very beneficial. Also, crit is also notoriously good against the magical hunters because they cannot obtain crit unless you're Oleron. But other than that, uh, they cannot obtain. Uh, I wonder if I can take this in time. I do have the bomb. I don't think I do enough damage and someone else showed up. If it was just a Charybdis, I would have been able to, but it's not just a Charybdis. So I'm just gonna walk over here, take this Phoenix instead, right? And then after that, we'll probably be able to end. Uh, but yeah, I hope that you learned something with this video i hope that you enjoyed it um make sure to like comment and subscribe specifically my discord is in the description if you want to play chat with me or anyone else on the server you can do so on the discord uh twitch down in the description as well you guys have yourselves a wonderful day see you in the next one love you bye